Hey, so we've been talking about, I, I wrote you an article earlier about part one, which was how to think about the ROI calculations and the formula and the complexity that goes into it. But I told you in part two that I would show you how to build it. So here is an ROI calculator, right? What it does is it says, it's, it looks like it's asking three questions. It's going to ask a fourth, which is tied to revenue. But in this case, I'm asking the question, what kind of company are you? Are you a product company? Are you a digital agency? Or are you an agency trying to sell products, right? Starting to look into that. Also, how long have you been in business? And what are some of the challenges you're facing? Sales, marketing, conversion, product development strategy, or uh, leadership or staffing issues? And then give me your contact info, right? So uh, you could decide not to collect information here. That's fine too. Uh, you will notice if I pick one of these guys, it'll say, how do you characterize your revenue from products? Under $1,000 a month, under 5,000, under 10,000, more than 10,000. If I change to digital agency, it'll say, how would you characterize your revenue from services? Under 20, under 45, under 100,000 or more than 100,000 a month, right? And if I do agency, uh, looking to sell products, I'll still be asking about revenue, okay? So, you know, you could pick whatever you want, wherever you're at. Um, and so someone's telling me what kind of company they have, right? And uh, in doing so, right, I'm, I'm picking how much revenue they're making. Then I'm, you know, I'm telling them, where are we at? Just getting started or we've been at it for a few years. And then uh, I'm asking you what kind of challenges, right? And I might check several of these, okay? Okay. Um, so I was just talking the other day to a product company. I'm going to give you actual numbers, right? And they were doing just under 10,000. They'd been doing it uh, barely over a year. And they had this problem, this problem, and this problem, okay? And uh, then we go calculate ROI, okay? And this is normally where I would route you to a page, et cetera. If you picked like super low revenue and uh, just getting started, I might just redirect you to a page that says, I don't think you're ready for coaching, right? Like I have that option using uh, the ability to, to route people, right? So there's that. Now we come in and take a look at the form on the back end of that. So you'll notice on the back end of that, this is just a normal, this is ninja forms, but you can do this with several different forms. Uh, I showed you in another article, right? All the forms that and how well they do conditional logic. So we're going to touch on conditional logic in a second, but Here's the regular kind of form. And then you get into the revenue piece. And the revenue piece, I can store a certain value, which is my, my notion of, okay, what is this number going to mean instead of the text? But also, I can have a calculated value. And the calculated value doesn't have to be the same. In this case, I'm translating some average number, like not 1,000, right? Uh, but maybe half this number. So if someone says they're under 1,000 a month, I'm going to say, okay, let's say that's 500 a month. And then I'm going to multiply it by 12 and I'm going to say, so it's 6,000 bucks a year is their revenue. So I'm, I'm, it's ballpark, right? I'm just saying, here's a guess, but I'm doing a 12 month instead of a one month. And I do the same thing for services. They pick something and then I calculate a yearly revenue, right? And then we have the, you know, business. And again, I can pick these numbers, how long they've been in. And then we have the uh, challenges and notice even though I'm saving the value in the, in the database of these issues, the calculation value is one for each. You might, if you were doing coaching or if you were doing anything else where you wanted to show an ROI, you might change these and weight these factors. And then that's it, right? And you go, wait, how are you going to get an ROI from that? Well, that's a good question. Let's go to the advanced section. In the advanced section, first I have some conditional logic, right? And conditional logic is the stuff that shows a field. Like remember, if you checked what kind of business you were and you said product, then I would say, oh, show the how much money you make, how, how do you characterize your revenue from product? Show it and make it required. And if you don't pick that, hide it, right? So just make sure it's not there. So I do that for the three different options in that question, right? Pick product, service, or service with a desire to add some product, right? But also, I do something else, right? And over here, I have a hidden field on this form. So if I scroll to the bottom, there's a hidden field called length. And length is defaulted to zero. But when I come into my conditional logic, 
I say, hey, take a look at this calculated field called yearly revenue, which I'll explain in a minute. And if it's less than a certain amount, make the length three. If it's greater than 75,000 and under, say, 150,000, make it six. And when it's over 150,000, make it 12. This is completely arbitrary, but let me explain what I'm doing. In the case of this example, which is coaching, I'm saying, how long would I coach this person? Might be three months, might be six months, might be 12 months. It's likely going to be, and I could get super more complicated, but it's likely going to be a function of how much revenue they're generating. So this is a sample, but I just said, oh, if it's under this amount, I probably would only spend three months with them. If it's over this amount over here. Now, these are not actual numbers. It's not the way I would calculate it. You'll, you'll notice that in another part later but you understand what it's doing. It's basically saying, based on what the calculated field of yearly revenue is, change the length amount. And you're saying, why are you doing that? Well, let's get into the calculations. When I come over to the calculations, the first calculation you're gonna see is yearly revenue. And what I do is I know there are two different fields. You could pick this one, you could pick this one. Depending on what you choose, it'll show it. But for me, I'm just gonna sum the two together. I know that one will always be blank because it'll be hidden and the other one will have a value. So I put it together. That's this number. And that's the number that is being used in the other conditional piece to set a different value for length, right? But also remember that there was the opportunities or rather it was what are you facing? What challenges you're facing? And there was a one for each option. So if you pick one, the answer is going to be one. If you pick two, right? Checkbox under two things. The value's gonna be two. So I set that to a variable called opportunities. Now then, what's the return, right? And I say, take the yearly revenue, right? Take the calculated value of the yearly revenue and multiply it times 20% times the number of opportunities. So if you said you only had one problem, I think I can give you a lift, a yearly lift of about 20%. If you have two problems, I think that could be 40% right? If you have four problems, I think I could get you 80% lift on your revenue. So that's what this calculation is doing. That's return. Now I need the coaching length because the cost of the investment is going to be based on, is it three months, six months, 12 months, right? So I take this length that was hidden and I stick it in another variable. Okay. And then I say, what's the investment right now? This investment is imagine I charged, which I don't a hundred dollars a month then the investment would be 100 times however the coaching length was, which is the length based on your revenue. So if it was three months, it would cost you a total investment of $300. If it was uh, six months, $600. You see what's happening here, right? There's the investment. And now we get to the final number. That's the ROI. And the ROI takes the return, meaning how much lift you got in your revenue, minus how much you invested, divided by that investment times 100 to get a percentage number. And so what happens when we come into the submissions and we refresh for that one that I just did is we'll see an answer in here and we'll say, okay, it was under 10,000. But what we want to do is look over here, right? The yearly revenue out of this calculation was about 60,000. There were three opportunities. They checked three boxes. The return then would be uh, 36,000, right? That's a, that's a big lift. And they would only be coaching because of this value. They'd only be coaching for three months. The cost would be 300, right? And so look at that ROI. Like it's just crazy. Now, if we were to change what the cost of that investment was, the ROI would change too. So you, you know that. And I can then, if I'm sitting here, when I go to my actions, I can say, oh, for my success, right, when I'm done with it, I can do a redirect, right? And the redirect can use conditional logic. So, right, uh, when the ROI is greater than, right, let's say it's greater than 100, right, then route them to one place. And if the ROI is, so I can do or, oh, no, sorry here, any. So the any means if any of these, right? So if I wanted to do, or if the uh, 
uh, investment is less than something else, right? So either way, if it's a low investment or if it's a high, you know, a good ROI, route them to one page. If it's a ridiculous ROI, route them to another page, right? So you can see how once they hit that button, based on all the calculations we did, you would be able to route them to the right place. Hopefully this all makes sense. I know we went through it fast. That's how to build an ROI calculator, specifically in this case, using NinjaForm.